So while the Resident Evil franchise is known for some of the most iconic and interesting characters in video games, the fact is that not every character completely sticks to landing the first time we see them in action. A perfect example of a hated character becoming a much more enjoyable character is Ashley Graham. In the original Resident Evil 4, she was unbearable. Yet, in the remake of RE4, most fans were pleasantly surprised with how much more enjoyable she was to the point where some fans are hoping that she will become an agent and team up with Leon as she teased in the remake. Maybe someday I'll become an agent like you. What do you think? We could protect the US from any and all threats. Is that right? So while not every RE character impresses us the first time that we meet them, I think some of them really deserve a second chance. And on this episode of Nerd Space Games, we'll be taking a look at 10 disliked or forgotten characters that I believe deserve a second chance. Before we get started though, let's talk about some rules. First off, I'll only be including characters on this list that have appeared in a single Resident Evil game. Also, since we are talking about characters that deserve a second chance, obviously we'll be focusing on characters that are disliked by most of the fanbase or easily forgettable characters. The reason why I'm putting them on this list is because I feel like despite what we saw of them in the one and only game that they appeared in, these 10 characters have a lot of potential to be better. But with that out of the way, my name is Ruben with Nerd Space Games and these are 10 Resident Evil characters that deserve a second chance. Let's get it. Number 10, Myra Burton, Resident Evil Revelations 2. Starting with a character that's not overly hated or disliked compared to the rest of the characters on this list, Myra Burton is someone that I felt like just never got a chance to live up to what she could have been. As the character of fan favorite Barry Burton, it's up to Myra to carry on the Burton legacy. Yet, in Resident Evil Revelations 2, she unfortunately was kind of sidelined for a majority of the game thanks to her inability to use guns. Don't get me wrong, I totally appreciated the unique gameplay mechanic that came with her character and the tragic backstory regarding why she hates guns. But as the daughter of Barry Burton, Myra has the potential to be a part of the next generation of Resident Evil protagonists. And thanks to the true ending of Revelations 2, Myra has overcome her fear of guns and she can now be the badass that she was always meant to be. In fact, with a twist ending revealing that Alex Wesker is still alive potentially and using Natalia's body as her vessel potentially, the stage is already set for a reason for Myra to return. Perhaps Alex took over Natalia and killed her mother or her sister and Myra is now on the path of revenge against Natalia aka Alex Wesker. But at the same time, she still wants to protect Natalia. It's a great premise for a very interesting story that could turn Myra Burton, a forgettable character in Revelations 2, into someone that could keep the Burton name alive long after Barry Burton himself. Number 9, Raymond Buster, Resident Evil Revelations. The first Revelations game has more dislike and forgotten characters than any other RE game out there. Take Raymond Vester for example, while Raymond is not as hated as a majority of the characters on this list, he is viewed as boring and easily forgettable by most fans. Hell, even Capcom forgot the dude as he's never mentioned or brought up again in a future Resident Evil game despite the implications that he had on the series. Anyway, the problem with Raymond in Resident Evil Revelations is that he felt like a generic double agent. When you compare him to someone like, I don't know, Ada Wong who did what he did but much better, the guy is a complete bum. Yet there are some interesting traits behind Raymond Vester that do show some potential to be a better character than the one that we got. For one, he's a mysterious character that appears to have some redeeming qualities about him as he saved Parker Luciani instead of letting him die at the end of the game. He also has one of the more unique character designs of the franchise so there's that going for him too. If we did get the opportunity to explore his character a little more, then I hope we can get a better personality for him that makes him stand out a little more than what we saw in Revelations. Number 8, Helena Harper, Resident Evil 6. With four separate campaigns full of new characters to the franchise, clearly at least one or more of them were bound to show up on today's list. As Leanne's partner, Helena had a lot to live up to as she was standing opposite of one of the most popular characters of the franchise. Still, she didn't do herself any favors when one of the first acts that we see from her is hiding key information from Leon after the death of the President of the United States. In fact, this is a big reason why she's disliked by the community so much. In the first half of Leon's campaign, we learned that Helena was used by Simmons, the main villain of the game, to allow him to kill the President. He did this by holding her sister, Deborah, hostage and forcing her to do exactly what he wanted. So, Helena did what he wanted and it led to not only the death of the president, but basically the whole population of the town of Tall Oaks. 
Then, instead of telling Leon everything the moment that the president is killed, she decides to hide everything from him until after they find her sister. I mean, they literally spent the first half of the game trying to find her sister, and she didn't once consider telling him what was going on while they made their way over to the church. Ignoring the bad decision making made by Helena in the first half of the game though, she was actually a very interesting character. As someone that had to watch her sister and best friend become a BOW right before her very eyes, she was forced into the war against biological weapons immediately thanks to Derek Simmons. And her commitment to making up for things that she did in order to save her sister leaves her with an interesting redemption arc that's worth exploring. She just needs to work on her poor decision making and yeah, she'll be just fine. Number 7, Jessica Sherawat, Resident Evil Revelations. Taking another look at Revelations, Jessica is yet another character that's easily forgotten. And unlike Rayman, Jessica actually has a personality, which is funny because Jessica's problem is that her personality is a bit too much at times. See a majority of the game, we see Jessica flirting with Chris. A lot, by the way. To the point where it gets a bit annoying to watch at times. Yet there's also a lot of potential with her character. Once we get through the first half of the game, it's revealed that Jessica is in fact a double agent and then later a triple agent and everything she does from this point on makes her a little less predictable. She also appears to be much smarter and much more manipulative than we originally thought and she has the potential to be a very dangerous villain in a future Resident Evil game thanks to her skills and intelligence. Also, thanks to the post credit scene, we see that she is actually working with Tricell, which sets her up to potentially have access to extremely dangerous viruses that she could use to her advantage at any point in time. And unlike Raymond Vester and even Ada Wong, Jessica appears to not have a moral compass and be less of an anti-hero and more of a villain. Number 6, James Marcus, Resident Evil Zero. So I know what you're gonna say, James Marcus is dead, how could he get a second chance? Simple, in the remake of RE0. It's already being rumored that RE0 is going to be the next remake and if that's the case, this could be the perfect opportunity to redeem the villain of the game, James Marcus. As one of the three founding fathers of Umbrella, James Marcus had the potential to rival other villains of the franchise like William Birkin and Albert Wesker. Yet, yeah, even as the main villain of the game, he was still outshined by those two very same guys thanks to the fact that he was poorly written. After James Marcus was betrayed and killed by Wesker and Birkin, he fused with the Queen Leech and vowed to get revenge on not only Umbrella, but the entire world. Essentially, he wanted the world to burn. So, he caused the outbreak in the Arclay Mountains, the Spencer Mansion, and the training facility. But honestly, the guy never really made any smart decisions at all. And instead of going straight for Birkin and Wesker, he directed his attention towards Rebecca and Billy because, you know, why not? Time and time again, James Marcus, as the Queen Leech, kept making rash and dumb decisions, which made him one of the worst villains of the franchise. But this is still the guy that's partly responsible for developing the T-Virus and finding Umbrella alongside Oswell E. Spencer. And fun fact, he's the only founding father of Umbrella that we actually get to fight in a Resident Evil game. So there's a lot of potential on the table for his character. My hope is that if RE0 is indeed getting a remake, we could see a much more intimidating and dangerous James Marcus front and center. Number 5, Billy Cohen, Resident Evil Zero. There's a lot of reasons why some fans hate RE0. Rather, it's the no inventory box that causes even more backtracking than the traditional survival horror game, or it's the lack of any interesting boss fights. RE0 is easily one of the most decisive games of the franchise. And Billy Cohen, the second main protagonist of the game opposite of the rookie stars medic herself, Rebecca Chambers, definitely didn't win any fans over either. There's a couple different reasons as to why fans were disappointed with Billy Cohen. For one, a lot of us really thought this game was going to focus on stars Bravo team. And while we did get Rebecca Chambers front and center, we unfortunately didn't get more time with either Richard Aiken or Enrico Marini. A lot of us really expected one of them to be the second playable character instead of some random jarhead found in the middle of the woods. In fact, Billy's whole presence in this game felt a little forced to be completely honest with you guys. Add that to the mannerisms of the character and the underwhelming voice actor that is completely outshined by the VA for Rebecca Chambers and you can see why Billy was so disliked by a vast majority of the community. Still over time, people have grown to accept Billy Cohen and are now wondering what ever happened to his character. With him splitting up with Rebecca in the Arclay Mountains moments before she enters the Spencer Mansion, there's a lot of questions about the status of Billy Cohen. 
is he alive where is he hell one rumor which i don't believe points to billy cohen somehow becoming nemesis Anyway, while there wasn't much to love about Billy in the original RE0, a remake of the game or even a Revelations game bringing his character back could easily redeem him. With the Resident Evil games having better voice actors and budgets overall nowadays, we could see Billy Cohen with a much more distinct personality that could very well win us over. And with his backstory of him being a falsely convicted criminal, we could see the tough life he had to live by constantly being on the run from the US government. And let's be real for a second, a lot of us let our emotions get the best of us and judge him before he even had a chance due to him taking the place of Enrico or Richard in RE0. At least I'm guilty of that. Number 4, Sheva Alomar, Resident Evil 5. Okay, so technically Sheva isn't really hated or disliked by the community for her character, but rather her poor AI. Which is a bit unfair because Chris Redfield's partner AI on single player is just as bad, but because the player is forced to play as Chris for the first time, unless they are playing co-op, Sheva is the one that usually gets the most heat for that. So ever since Sheva showed up in Resident Evil 5, the girl became a running gag within the Resident Evil community for that reason. But here's the thing, ignoring the mechanics of the AI itself, Sheva is actually a really interesting character that definitely deserves to be front and center in a Resident Evil game once again. As a child, Sheva had to watch her family and her village die thanks to Umbrella's research of BOWs. Because of that, Sheva joined the BSAA in order to fight against these threats and prevent the same thing happening to other kids around the world. Following Jill Valentine as Chris's new partner, Sheva had a tall hill to climb. But on more occasions than not, she met the challenge and far exceeded expectations. She was a relatable character that was scared at first, but ultimately she fought against that fear to do what was right and join Chris in stopping Wesker and Excella. And while the story was primarily focused on Chris, Wesker, and Jill and their whole relationship, Sheva still had her moments to shine every now and then. But because of the Chris and Wesker rivalry being front and center throughout the game, Sheva never really got to live up to her full potential. Seeing her in a future game without Chris would be great for her character development and hopefully we'll get to see her return at some point. My hope is that we see a spin-off game with her and Carlos at some point. I know, weird combination of characters, but trust me, it will work. I'm all for it. Number 3, Oswell E. Spencer, Resident Evil 5. Sticking with RE5, we take a look at a villain that I believe was completely underutilized. In fact, he was barely seen in the game and was killed off prior to the events of the story of RE5. That of course being Oswell E. Spencer. So technically, Spencer has been around since the start of the franchise. It was obviously his mansion that the Stars Alpha and Bravo team found themselves in during the events of the first game, and he also found an umbrella, and he even has ties to Mother Miranda, the main villain of Village. Despite all of this though, Spencer has only physically appeared in one game, Resident Evil 5, and it was in a brief sequence in which he gives a speech to Albert Wesker moments before Wesker kills him. Yeah, considering the fact that this guy is responsible for almost every Resident Evil game thus far, it felt a bit unsatisfying to see him die in a short, flashback sequence. However, Capcom has the chance to potentially redeem his character in a future game. I won't dive too much into this as I already have a whole other video dedicated to my Oswald E. Spencer is alive theory, but long story short, I could see Spencer being the main villain for a future game, more specifically Resident Evil 9. As someone connected to Mother Miranda and Alex Wesker, there's plenty of ways for Spencer to somehow avoid death and return for another Resident Evil game, thus redeeming his character. He's one of the best and most dangerous villains of the franchise, so in my opinion, Capcom needs to give us a satisfying send-off for the character by bringing him back as the leader of the Connections or some other organization in RE9. Capcom, you hear me? Make it happen, please. Number 2, Steve Burnside, Resident Evil Code Veronica. As much shade as I throw towards Steve Burnside, the fact is that the guy does have some potential. It's just all ruined by the decisions that he makes, the things that he does, and the annoying things that he says. Still, Steve is a very important part in making Claire the person she is today. And with a remake of Code Veronica around the corner, potentially, we could finally see Steve Burnside, dare I say it, be a very likable character. I know, I know, it's crazy to say those words, but think about it for a second. The Carlos in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis wasn't the most likable character of the franchise. Sure, he wasn't as bad or as cringy as Steve Burnside is, but he definitely didn't do much to connect with the fans enough to earn himself a spot in a future RE game. 
However, in my opinion, the remake changed that. Carlos 2.0 was much more relatable, likable, and charming than his counterpart in the original game. In fact, most people want to see him in a future game now. Ashley Graham is another character like that, which I mentioned at the start of today's video. So maybe Steve Burnside could be the next character to get the remake redemption treatment. Looking at the positives with Steve, you have his backstory. As a child of an Umbrella employee that got caught selling company secrets to Umbrella's rivals, Steve was locked up in a prison on Rockford Island just for being the son of a traitor. This ultimately left Steve with the mentality that he couldn't trust anybody, not even family, as his father was basically the one responsible for putting him in this mess and his mother dying. Yet over time, Steve builds a strong relationship with Claire to the point where he'll risk his own life to save her on multiple occasions. While Steve's death wasn't as tragic in the original game due to him being an unlikable character, making his character more bearable in the remake could lead to one of the saddest deaths ever in the Resident Evil franchise. Hell, his death could even top Ethan Winters and Pierce Nibbins if the remake does a good job with his character. Number 1, Jake Mueller, Resident Evil 6. Okay, so Jake's campaign is without a doubt my least favorite part of Resident Evil 6. It's not because of the story though, I actually enjoy the premise of the story of Jake and Sherry in Resident Evil 6, I just think it was poorly executed. I mean, on paper, the son of Albert Wesker and the daughter of William Birkin teaming up as the main protagonist of a Resident Evil game literally sounds incredible to me. However, thanks to the weird mechanics of Resident Evil 6 and the story being a bit all over the place, we never got to see this play out in a positive way. Instead, we got the dumpster fire that was Jake's campaign of Resident Evil 6. Still, I do really enjoy the premise and it's something that I don't think Capcom should give up on completely. In fact, if Sherry didn't already appear in three games, I would be including her on this list as well because I would like to see Jake and Sherry team up again, but in a more survival horror focused Resident Evil game. Like I said earlier, Jake Mueller is the son of Albert Wesker, the most iconic villain of the franchise. Getting the opportunity to see Jake do good in the world against the BOW threat when his father was one of the biggest advocates of BOWs sounds too good to just forget about. Jake's personality is also a really fun one. He's almost as good as Leon in RE6 with his one-liners, and he's as tough as the boulder-punching Chris Redfield. So, while I do dislike RE6 and Jake's campaign is my least favorite of that game, Jake Mueller isn't a character that Capcom should give up on. They just need to find a better way to rework him for a much better game with a much better story than the one that we got in Resident Evil 6. But that does it for this episode of Nerdspace Games. Hit up the comments and let me know what you think of my list. Do you agree with the characters that I believe deserve a second chance? Or do you think all of these characters should just be forgotten and left behind for all eternity? Let me know down below. Anyway, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more survival horror content. Also, leave a like on today's video if you really enjoyed today's topic. But thanks for watching and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerdspace Games. Take care.